Are you looking for a free way to keep your computer clean of malware or viruses? If so, then stay tuned. I've got a few apps to show you that'll help you out. So one of the first apps we're going to look at today is going to be uBlock Origin. It's actually an extension. You can get it for Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, or even the Opera browser if you choose. And I'll leave links to those store downloads down below so that you can check them out and add them as needed. Now, the great thing about uBlock Origin is you can add and filter lists into it. And some of those lists, even by default, will block known malware domains or uh, known virus domains or just malicious domains in general. So this is like the first step towards keeping your computer secure because it won't even let you access the website to download anything should you accidentally find yourself on one. Let's go ahead and check it out and look into the settings and see how this works. So this is what it looks like to find uBlock Origin on the Chrome Web Store. You can go to chrome.google.com and search for this extension if you'd like. Just uh, type it in as shown and it should come up. As you can see, it's a little advanced there. You can definitely see like scripts and all kinds of other stuff that it's blocking live, but there's so many other cool things you can do with it. Now it's really kind of targeted as a privacy or like ad blocker and it will add that in there, but it does also add some security and block malicious websites. So let's look at that now. Once you have uBlock origin installed, You'll click it up here in the top right. Right here, you'll open the dashboard or AKA the settings. And over here, it should start you out on the settings. I usually just leave this as default, but here's where the real best part of this extension is, and that's the filter list. So when you go into the filter list, as you can see here, you'll have the built-in stuff, you'll have ads, and you can expand that and you know, add or remove as needed. Like for instance, if you find that one of these lists has an issue with some of your favorite sites, you can turn it off. And then as you can see, it also has privacy. And the real best part here, malware. As you can see by default, it has two of the three checked with the third one being for spam. So this may not be malicious, but it just might be useless websites. The other really cool thing about that is you can check the import button. And if you find any lists that add stuff that you want blocked, uh, for instance, like hate websites or even pornography, you can add the web URL to that list into here and it'll be added. So it'll block that content as long as your import box is checked, of course. So that's pretty much all there really is towards running this. Like right out of the box, it's already gonna add some level of security to your PC, and it'll stop you from going to websites that are malicious before you even get the chance to go onto a site and it automatically downloads something or trick you into downloading something. Now, one of the other really cool things about uBlock is the fact that if you do find something that's broken or is not working or is just accidentally identified in a way that it shouldn't be, then what you can do is you can go up here and you can whitelist that. That's one of the great parts about uBlock. So essentially what whitelisting means is that you can say, hey, I know that you have this on the list. Let's say it's blocking google.com. I see that you're blocking google.com. I really don't want you to, so let me add google.com and you can go ahead and unblock that. And you do that by going down here. You'll add to the line, you'll go to google.com. As you can see, I already have streamlabs.com and you'll just click apply changes. Now, google.com is whitelisted and it'll never be blocked, even if it's on a block list. Now, the next application I'm gonna show you is an extension and it's another browser extension. It's called Ghostery. Now it's not really aimed at any kind of like security, for instance, blocking malware domains or viruses or stuff like that. But what it is really aimed at is it's aimed at blocking things like tracking. 
and advertisements. And once we get into the settings and look at it, you'd be surprised how much stuff it'll block. And this is why I recommend it. Now, you can get Ghostery for your browser by going to ghostery.com, as you can see up here. And then you can click on install Ghostery. Now, at this point, because I'm in Chrome, it took me to the Google Chrome store, which you see it's already installed. But if you were in Firefox or Opera or something like that, it would take you to its respective store. So from here, I already have it installed. So let's look at some of the settings. You go into it, you'll click the triple dots up here at the top right, and then click on settings. Now it's not as in-depth as uBlock Origin. uBlock Origin is kind of just a block whatever you want type thing. And Ghostery is more, you know, narrow in that it's mainly only blocking advertising or trackers. But if you look here on the right hand side under global blocking, the first thing you see is it's blocking almost 2000 trackers. Once you add all of this up, if you check all these boxes, you're probably blocking somewhere around 3000 different websites or servers around the web that are just tracking what you're doing. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but just look under social media, a hundred trackers alone, just for social media. Some of them are probably for Twitter. Some of them are probably for Facebook. I mean, if you're not on that site, why does that site need to know that you're on another site? That's why I say this is a security thing because it does, it, it helps prevent, I'm not gonna say it doesn't, it helps prevent anyone from building some kind of profile about you around the web. And then, you know, maybe the companies that might be tracking you are not malicious companies. Maybe they just wanna serve you tailored ads it was like, hey, we saw you were Googling, you know, a chainsaw. So now we're going to show you ads about chainsaws. But you never know what someone at that company is capable of. And what if that person has malicious intent? And they build so much of a profile around you that they can find out where you live and show up at your house and rob you or something like that. I mean, yeah, okay, call me a conspiracy theorist. I'm going way out there on a limb. But... You never know. Anything is possible. So why not protect yourself? And really with Ghostry, that's all there is to it. I mean, you can go into trust and restrict and you can whitelist sites just like in uBlock. So if you're having an issue with a site or you find it's incorrectly blocking something, you can whitelist it so that it's never blocked again. Additionally, you can restrict specific things. You can go in and if you find something you don't want, you can type that website in right here and then you can click the add button and now it's blocked forever. Additionally, you can go to your ad block list here and you can do more than just ads or ads and trackers. You can even go to annoyances and annoyances could be things like you go to a website and it plays a loud sound you aren't expecting or something like that. Um, that's just an example that may not be what it does, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for Ghostery. I mean, yeah, it's not gonna help you block malware. That's what uBlock is for, but it will help you block services that are tracking you around the web. All right, so that's two pieces of software, or should I say two extensions for your browser. So I, I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's look at something else. Now, before everybody starts yelling about why you shouldn't block ads, look, I get it. It costs them money to host this you know, article that you're reading or pictures or whatever, it costs money that they have to pay, you know, for the staff to keep everything working. So you get content and, you know, you're enjoying your time on their site. So I get that. I'm not against companies making money, but I'm going to show you why it's a good idea to block ads and explain it to you as I'm showing you some code for a website. So here we are on Washington Post. And as you can see over here, here's the code for the website. I'm looking at the code. And as you can see, when I mouse over it, it shows you right here, you saw it go away, what exactly I'm looking at. Now, guess what? Look right above it. You have a link right here. Now, granted, that link is pointing to WashingtonPost.com, 
But usually ads will have some code like this in it where it's pointing to an outside site or a content delivery network that's not owned by, say, Washington Post. And the reason why you'd want to block this is because the Washington Post, they can't just, you know, go jump on someone else's server and go, hey, we see that this is malicious. And a lot of times, some ads that are put out that are especially real new from a new company or something, the companies are making money off showing that ad. So someone might, you know, make an ad that doesn't even exist for a company that's something malicious, and either A, the ad will download something malicious in the background, and the people at, say, Washington Post, I'm not saying that they did this, I'm just saying they could fall victim to this, were more than willing to accept the money for the ad, but not review it and make sure it was clean. And even if they did review it, it could all come up as negative and clean and everything because it was freshly created by a malicious actor the day before. And you'll see this all throughout a lot of websites. Like a lot of your ads will point back to servers that aren't owned by the people who you're viewing the content through. Another reason you would do this is some of those ads are, you know, they're clickbait, so they really entice you to click on it. And then when you click on it, it tracks you around the web and builds a profile on you. Even if it doesn't have your personal information or anything that ties back to your specific name, they do have stuff that's tying back to like your computer equipment. So they pretty much through public records can probably get an idea of what your address is and where you live. And from that, from that, they can tie it to your name through a phone book or something similar. So this is why I'm all for blocking ads. I have no problem, like anytime I'm reading pcworld.com, I have no problem clicking on links that they set up that are clearly affiliate links that make them money whenever I click on it and going to a site and buying something that I think is a good deal. And I think that everyone, you know, should have that kind of attitude. I do want to support the company. I just don't want to support any kind of practices unbeknownst to the company that might be deceptive or is used for tracking what I'm doing around the web. I don't understand why people need to know that. So anyway, that's just a look at why I say you should do it. I mean, some of the stuff here, like this is a JavaScript. Let's see where that is. I don't even see it on the page. I might not be able to see it, but you know, some of the, and Java is not someone who's unknown for having issues with security. So in fact, some of your viruses come in JavaScript. So that's why I say, go ahead and install this as one of your first things security wise, because for one, if you run into a malicious ad or would have without it, not to worry, it blocked it anyway. And for two, you can also add those, you know, those malware websites. Go ahead and check that list off so that it, if you do accidentally click on something to try to go to a malware website, it blocks it anyway. So the next site I want to show you is actually not a piece of software you'll install, but it's a helpful, a helpful website that you can use in making a decision if you should get a free antivirus or pay for an antivirus. And pretty much it's a third party, like not involved with any of the company's rating site that downloads, buys, or whatever antivirus software or malware software and just throws a slew of all kinds of different like you know malicious apps at it to see what all it'll block and then report back on it it's called av-test.org and i've been using it for a while now just to you know rate things and they update i think about like once a quarter so this way you can review what's good you know what's best what's good that's free and make a decision on what you can decide is the best for you and your budget. Let's show you that now. So here we are at avtest.org. And as you can see, the latest report came out 
in April 2020. And the top one they have right now is one called Unlab. I don't even know if I said that right, so I'm just guessing at the pronunciation. The second one, and it's actually an antivirus, and it's free, that I recommend to almost everyone, and I use it when I'm troubleshooting virus issues with people, is Avast. Let's take a look at Avast, because that's something I'm going to recommend here later. And let's see why exactly they rated it as number two. So you can click on each individual one. It'll go into the product and you can see protection against zero day malware attacks, inclusive web and email threats, real world testing. Industry average is 98.4. March was 98.2 and April was 99%. 304 samples were used to test against it. Detection of widespread and preventative malware discovered in the last four weeks. All 100. 20,000 samples were used in this test. And it detected 100% across two months. Now let's go into performance. As you can see here, it'll show you like how your computer will act when using this antivirus. So... This is pretty much like standard or high-end PC, like how much performance you're gonna lose while using this antivirus. So you can make a decision, like for instance, if you're someone who's a developer or someone who, like me, is creating content on YouTube and you don't want you know, some piece of software slowing you down, choosing which antivirus is right for you, fits your budget, and fits the performance use of your computer. Another thing is the usability. So you can see here like false detections of legitimate software. A million samples were used and out of a million samples, none were detected falsely. But the industry average is four. Four is not bad for a million. False warnings or blockages, again, zero. False blockages of certain actions, industry average is one, again, zero. False warnings concerning certain actions carried out whilst installing and using legitimate software. Again, zero and zero. So this is a good weapon for you to go online and go, hey, what's a good antivirus? Because that's something that's asked of me a lot. Here you go, av-test.org. And you can go through at the time and see what the best is for right now. Now you can even scroll down and look, you can get February 2020. It was still the same. And even if you don't want to buy anything or don't even want to add it and just want to use Windows Defender, look, it's right here. It's in the top list. It's not the best, but it's come a long way since they first started, you know, developing Windows Defender. This used to be way down on the list. And now it's like in the top 20. Again, you can go look at December. You can see who the tops were. So you can get an idea over time, like, you know, for the last year, for example, of who you should really trust over a long period of time. Like, who's proven themselves? And that's why I say use this website to make that decision. So our next piece of software is actually an antivirus that I recommend to people. And it's one I've been using for years when someone brings a computer to me and says, hey man, I think it's got a virus. That's gonna be Avast. It's free. It has a special feature where you can scan your hard drive before Windows even loads, which essentially doesn't let any services or apps start up. So that way everything gets scanned before a piece of software might pop up or some kind of malware or something might disable your antivirus. This is why I recommend it because it's free and it's the only one I've found that's free that's doing it. I'm not gonna say there's not others out there doing it. They're just A, not as high rated or B, not as easy to find. So let's go ahead and take a look at Avast and see what all it offers you. Okay, so here's our first look at Avast. This is what you'll see after you install it and you sign in and go through all the steps 
that it'll show you to make your computer safe or update your applications that are out of date and things like that. So the first thing about this is that you'll need to activate it. And if you just want free, if you want to pay for it, two bucks a month. That's not too bad. $24 a year. Can't complain about that. But anyway, if you just want free, go ahead and select that. You'll go ahead and click no thanks. And now you're good to go. The next part of this that's great is the protection tab. This is where you can do your virus scans, you can check your shields, you can check check the virus chest, everything. As you can see, things like real site, sandbox, firewall, ransomware, shield are turned off and you know that's behind the paywall. But still, what you get for free is not too bad. If you want to go ahead and check your PC, you click on virus scans. And from here, you can do a boot time scan. This is where I'm telling you the bread and butter is. As you can see, scans run when your PC starts up to reach places inaccessible to ordinary scans. So in other words, it does it before Windows even loads. That's great. All you have to do after that, you can install the definitions for a more thorough boot time scan and then click on next PC reboot and reboot your computer if you want. That's it. You can go here and you click on settings so you can set your sensitivity on your core shields, your virus scans, your virus chest. You can set how big you want it to be. Even on your Wi-Fi inspector, you can check and see, you know, like, check out all the Wi-Fi networks you're connecting to and if they're malicious or not. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you about ABEST. Otherwise, on the free version at this point, it's sitting back in the background right now and it's protecting my PC from anything that may be malicious. And again, it's free and it's the number two antivirus that's out there. So why not give it a shot before you go and buy something? Now, the next piece of software and the last one I'm gonna show you is Malwarebytes. It's another big name and it's pretty popular and a lot of people like it. I've used it for cleaning out a lot of PCs and I think it's great. And I'm pretty much just gonna show it off to you so you'll see a little bit about it and see what it's like. You know, it has a free version and if you want, you can buy it. I don't have anything against them. I think it's a great product and I've cleaned many a PCs out of it. So let's take a look at Malwarebytes and let me show you what I like about it. So this is what Malwarebytes looks like when you're using the free version and you're in it by default. It's pretty basic, actually. There's not really much to do. You just click the big blue scan button and let it do its thing. However, there are some things that you might need to set up before you do this, and I'm gonna show them to you now. So for one, you can click on the settings here, and then you're gonna go to the security tab. So under security, what you're gonna see here is some pretty decent options. Scan for rootkits, scan within archives, and then use artificial intelligence to detect threats. The scans may take longer, but trust me, it's worth it in the long run. Uh, one of the things that artificial intelligence does when it scans for things is instead of just looking for a file name on a list that it downloaded, it actually might execute the file in a safe container that can't access the rest of your system and read the code and go, oh, hey, this is malicious code. And then it throws it into the quarantine, which is great. Another thing is you want to set it up to detect potentially unwanted programs. That's what a pup is. It may not be anything malicious, but it might be something that's just like showing you ads or something like that. And it's just unwanted. Another thing are unwanted modifications, like any kind of modification to your operating system. And that's pretty much it. I mean, like I said, the free version is pretty basic, but it does provide some pretty good detection and removal. Once you're done with that, you, like I said, you just click the scan button and there you go. And I think malware bytes is pretty good. I mean, in conjunction with Avast, especially if you already have a virus or you suspect that you have one, 
this is a great application to troubleshoot that and go through and make sure that a lot of that malicious stuff is removed. And that's pretty much it. That concludes the video. So one of the things I'd like to add about Malwarebytes that I didn't mention is that with the free version, one of the downsides is, is that it will not run persistently. So in other words, you might have to open it once a week to run a scan on your PC and make sure everything's safe. I mean, that is a throwback, but again, you're getting it for free. And you can set how severe the scan is in the settings I showed you earlier, so it'll take less time. I mean, who wants to turn your computer on and then wait like an hour or two for it to scan for viruses? I don't. I don't think anybody else does. I mean, I don't see anyone getting happy like, oh my God, I get to wait for the virus scan. No, no one does that. But it could be an extra tool that if you think you may have gotten something malicious, you can run. And if it doesn't find anything, you can feel safe knowing that you probably don't have anything on your PC. So the reason why I suggest these four extension, well, four applications for people's computers is because for one, it creates a two-tiered level of security for your PC. One tier level is the extensions in your browser, so you block Origin and uh, Ghostery, and pretty much it'll block stuff before it even gets onto your PC. The second layer is the antivirus. And so if you do end up downloading something that's not caught by, for instance, you block Origin, or you know, ghostery, then you're, it gives you a chance for your antivirus to scan it and detect and go, hey, wait a minute, this is malicious. Are you sure you wanna install it? Or even put it in the virus chest before it even has a chance to run on your PC. And actually this is a more advanced approach to securing your home PC or your laptop than just your normal like, oh, I got Norton or uh, you know, I got McAfee or something like that. And the reason why I say that is because if any of you work in an enterprise or, you know, corporate environment, then one of the things you should know is they have a three tiered system. So usually they have an outside source that scans all web data before it makes it into the network. So before it even gets, you know, down to the person's computer and then they have a scanner on each individual computer and then they probably have a device somewhere in the network that's checking everything else and going hey wait this computer over here yeah it's uh exhibiting some behavior that uh looks kind of malicious so it may have gotten past things you might want to check that and it might send a notification to your id it department or something like that um Another thing that they can have, or that third tier, another thing it can block is it might, you know, there, it, there might be stuff on its list that's not on others, and that would be data going out. So it's being sent. For instance, like someone getting your credit card from a save file or something like that and sending it out so they can use it maliciously online. And that's why I recommend this approach. It's free. Uh, it has a lot of protection. I've never really run into any issues with it. I mean, about the only way it will not protect you is if literally it tells you, hey, this website's malicious, and you go, I don't care, continue anyway, and then you download and install everything on that website. So that's all there is to it. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, go ahead and like and comment down below. And thanks everyone for watching. Have a good one. Stay safe.